Ramadan is the most blessed month in the Islamic calendar. It is primarily a spiritual training program intended to help us cultivate essential virtues and skills in order for us to lead productive lives. Humans by nature become lazy. We become lazy and we become forgetful of our true purpose in life. We become so preoccupied with the physical and material aspects, forgetting the spiritual core of our personalities. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us with Ramadan. It comes to remind us of this true human identity and to discipline and reform us in such a way to awaken our full productive potential. And taqwa, righteousness, piety, and duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is at the core of this spiritual training. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum as-siyamu kama kutiba ala alladhina min qablikum la'allakum tattaqoon. O you who believe we have prescribed fasting for you as we prescribed on those before you so that you can achieve taqwa. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an annahu kana yaqulu fi khutbatihi khayru al-zad al-taqwa wa ra'su al-hikmata makhafatu Allahi azza wa jal. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu ta'ala an one of the great companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Whenever he started his khutbah, he would say that the best provision is taqwa. And the foundation of wisdom is the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the exalted. Because of our weakened spiritual state and unproductive lives, we are today sadly witnessing serious atrocities committed against Muslims. The latest in Gaza. Some of these atrocities, unfortunately, are committed in the name of Islam by people who claim to be Muslim against Muslim. Ramadan is the annual retreat in which we are to recharge, to refocus, and to regain our productivity. Regret to be. Muslims are the most unproductive in the world today. We are merely good at consuming, but we don't produce anything, or we produce very little. Whereas this was not the case in the past. We were at the forefront of production for others to come and imitate. Rather now we are the imitators. So we need to regain the pride of discipline of progress, development, and innovation. And we will not become more productive if we do not have productive Ramadans. If we don't have a productive Ramadan, we will never become productive. The famous quote, nothing makes a person more productive than the last minute. That's our problem, unfortunately. We leave everything to the last minute. But the last minute here that is spoken about is the last minute of our lives on this dunya. None of us knows when that will be. None of us knows when this will be our last Ramadan. So what are we waiting for? When are we waiting to be more productive? When are we waiting to, to make use of our lives? Inshallah, I will outline seven tips for a productive Ramadan. Because if we can be productive in Ramadan, we can take that productivity outside to the rest of our lives. And these tips are centered around the intent, plan, and do formula. So the first tip is intend. Intend to live a productive life and start with this Ramadan. As the Prophet ﷺ said, everything starts with the intention. إِنَّمَا الْعَمَالُ بِالنِّيَّةِ Every action is by the intention. And we need to make sure that our niyyah is sincere. That there is ikhlas in it. 
that we wish to make with our lives what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to do with our lives, not to waste it. And with that then comes the dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asking us to be as productive as we can possibly be. The second tip is to plan. Because the rule states that who fails to plan, plans to fail. No wonder we're in a state of constant failure because we do not recognize the importance of planning. It is not enough to have a sincere desire, a sincere wish to change. Desires and wishes will produce nothing. You must put that desire down on paper into a productive, constructive plan. So plan exactly what it is you want to achieve out of this Ramadan. And in order to draw up your plan for this Ramadan, you must evaluate what you did last Ramadan. Where you left last Ramadan, that is where you enter this one. And where do you want to exit this Ramadan? Do we want to enter Ramadan and leave it exactly the same? That would be a waste of this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us of this month. So plan, set your goals for the month. And then every day, list the tasks that you wish to do that particular day. The third tip is the Salah scheduler. Schedule your day around the Salah, not the other way around. Unfortunately for most of us, we try to squeeze Salah into our busy schedules. Whereas we should rather look at the Salah times and say, okay, I'm going to fit everything else around my Salah. Because Salah is one of the most important things we have to connect us with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to remind us of that contract we have with Him. Ramadan is a great time to do that, to give Salah the importance it deserves. To establish your salah for those of you who have not yet built your salah for those of us who are still weak in the performance of our salah Ramadan is the time to do that strengthen your salah build it establish it so that when you exit this month when you graduate from the month of Ramadan your salah is firmly established so perfect your salah inna salata tanha'ani fahsha'i wal munkar salah will help protect us from immorality and committing sin the fourth tip is take charge of your mornings. Take charge of your mornings. Leadership and management theory has moved away from time management. Time management theory is old, but unfortunately for Muslims, we still have to teach time management because we are the worst at managing our times. We are the best at time wasting. While we are still struggling to manage our time, the rest of the world is focusing on managing their energy. So when is the best time to manage your energy? When are your energy levels the best of, your, of the day? Because then that is when you are most productive. And the best time is in the morning. After you've had a good rest, good night's sleep. But what do we do? We go to bed late at night. We don't get a good sleep. We wake up with a hangover, and we are unproductive for the rest of the day. We miss the Salah, we don't read the Qur'an, the whole day is wasted. So let's have a look at what is the ideal morning for a believer in the month of Ramadan. The f it starts with going to bed early. Not watching all those TV programs that they schedule, especially in the month of Ramadan, to waste your time. To waste your time. So get a good night's sleep. Pray your taraweeh and then go to bed. And don't do your witr because you know you're going to get up for what? For tahajjud. You already made the niyyah by not praying the witr to get up for tahajjud. And tahajjud nowadays is on sale. Fajr is on sale. Fasting is on sale. Because we are fasting in winter. We are fasting 11 and a half hours a day. So you get up 15 minutes before you would normally wake up for suhoor. So one hour before fajr. You pray tahajjud. Best time to pray tahajjud is in this month of Ramadan. The best time to make dua is after the tahajjud, that time of the night, the last third of the night. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that is the best time to make dua. And then you pray your witr, the last prayer of the night. And then you have your suhoor. So I'm talking about the ideal morning now. You pray tahajjud. 
You ate your suhoor because the Prophet wasallam said there is barakah in the suhoor. So never miss suhoor. Don't sacrifice that barakah. The Prophet is telling us, our beloved is telling us there is barakah in it. Who wants to waste that barakah? So you get the suhoor. And then you pray your fajr. And then you read Quran. And you never go back to bed. You never go back to bed because your day started at 4.30 in the morning, if Fajr is at 5.30. Your day started at 4.30 and you are not going to sleep. The worst thing that you can do is go to bed after Suhoor, after Fajr. The worst thing. The best thing is to do is to stay up. And now after your Quran, you do all those important tasks that you already wrote down the night before of what you wanted to do, your most important assignments you do in the morning. First thing after Quran. Because that's when you have the most energy. Your mind is fresh. The air outside is fresh. You are the most productive at that particular moment. So the thing that you want to do the most, that's most critical for you to do that day, do it then. So take charge of your mornings is tip number four. Tip number five, block your Quran time. Lock it in for the day. Whether it is one hour or for those just starting out a half an hour a day. For the kids, 15 minutes a day, compared to the two or three hours that they spend on the iPad, on the Wii and the Playstations and the Xbox, what's 15 minutes? I know for them it's difficult, it's hard, it's torture. That 15 minutes is torture, but we need to block it in for them. And we need to give them incentives to help them block that time. So if you're going to do your one hour Quran block in every day, خلاص, that's it, one hour I want to do, I'm not going to do less. If I can do more and Allah puts blessings in my time, I will do more. Block that Qur'an time. Because Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. شَهْرُ رَمَضَانَ الَّذِي أُنزِلَ فِيهِ الْقُرْآنِ هُدَى لِلنَّاسِ وَبَيْهِنَاتٍ مِنَ الْهُدَى وَالْفُرْقَانِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Ramadan is the month in which the Qur'an was sent down as a guide to people. Clear signings, signs for guidance and to distinguish between haqq and batil, between right and wrong. Tip number six. This tip might sound strange. Take a power nap. Bil Arabi Qailula. After Dhuhr Salah. Because remember you you up since 4.30. And you went to bed maybe at 9.30. So you got seven hours sleep. If you're an adult, that's okay. If you're a child, 8.30, you got your eight hours sleep. So you're going to need that power nap after Dhuhr. And all you need is 20 minutes. If you're at work and you have a half an hour break, 10 minutes for your salah, 20 minutes for your nap. Perfect. That 20 minutes, you'll be surprised how that 20 minutes re-energizes and refreshes you. And they've actually done studies on this. NASA did a study maybe 15, 20 years ago. And they calculated and worked out exactly you need 24 minutes. The Japanese have been doing this for a long time. It used to be custom in Spanish, in the Middle East, in Spain and so forth to have a nap in the mid-afternoon so that you can be more productive in the rest of the day. But what you do is if you just keep going, you'll find that your productivity levels just continue to decline. Tip number seven, eat healthy. As I said many times before, Ramadan is the month of fasting, it is not the month of feasting. If you don't lose weight in Ramadan, then you have to ask yourself, did I really fast? So we need to eat healthy. Overeating is one of the main causes for people to be unproductive. Because when you overeat, the more you eat, all that blood rushes to your stomach to digest food and your body is just involved, engaged in digesting food. And that's why when you eat too much, the thing you want to do is sleep. Because there's no blood providing oxygen to the brain. But if you eat just enough, as the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, if we eat just enough morsels of food to keep our backs straight, that is the minimum. The maximum is the three thirds. Unfortunately, we constantly violate the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ when we exceed that maximum of three thirds. A third for food, a third for liquid and a third for air. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhal nasu kulu mimma fil ardi halal an tayyiba. It's not enough only eat to halal. 
to eat what is halal. We need to eat what is wholesome, nutritious. And you are what you eat. If you eat unhealthy, processed food, it's going to affect your health and your productivity. The Prophet ﷺ encouraged us to eat as natural food as we possibly can in their natural states. Not all this processed food that we're eating. The three things that we should be very careful of that the taste bud gets addicted to. Our taste buds get so quickly addicted to sugar, salt and fat. This is the month in which we need to discipline our taste buds. Readjust it. So Ramadan teaches us to eat less and to eat healthier. The Prophet said, So mutasihru. Fast and you will be healthy. Ramadan is also the month in which we are going to have those people who worship food. They're exposed in this month. The food worshippers. Yes, they have Muslim sounding names. But they are food worshippers. Have a look at them at the time of iftar. If the food is running late and the adhan is about to go, you find these people in frantic states of chaos. And when they sit down to eat, it's like vultures that have been starved for months. These are food worshippers. So we need to ask ourselves, who are we? The nafs, the nafs is the time to be trained in this month. Nafsul ammara bisu. That nafs that just wants to satisfy its desires. Allah gave us this month to discipline and suppress it. To tell that nafs, you are not going to control me. I am going to control you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala teaches us something very important in the Quran. That we will not change. We will not become more productive. Until we change ourselves. Inna Allah la yughayru ma biqawmin hatta yughayru ma bi'anfusihim. So true believers are those who are constantly changing. We are constantly looking for ways to improve ourselves. To become more productive. Always striving for excellence. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants this of the true believers. Allah tells us in the Quran. Inna Allah ya'mur bil adli wal ihsan. Surely Allah commands justice and ihsan. Ihsan is proficiency, striving for excellence, always wanting to do things better, not being satisfied with mediocrity, not being satisfied with just passing. MashaAllah, I got 50%, I just passed. And the Prophet sallallahu said in the hadith, Inna Allah katab al-ihsan ala kulli shay. Verily, Allah has prescribed ihsan, excellence for everything. So everything we do, even the time that we spend in this Ramadan, we should try to perfect that time that we spend and strive for excellence. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of these believers who are constantly looking for change, improvement and productivity.